Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very, very good afternoon. Today we are in the Physical Chemistry Laboratory, Maharashtra College, Mumbai University. Myself, Dr. Ahmad Sheikh, PhD, DSC, Doctor of Science, and of Chemistry Department, Maharashtra College, Mumbai University. Today I will demonstrate you to find out amount of phosphoric acid, in fact, R2 phosphoric acid, in the given polar sample. Remember, in this polar sample, you know, it is a carbonated drink, there is carbonic acid, H2CO3 also. So, what do we do first? We take the polar sample, we heat it to expel all the carbon dioxide, hence carbonic acid, otherwise it will interfere with the titration. After heating it gently, to release really all the carbon dioxide, we cool it, you can see in the water bath, after cooling it, after cooling it from here, we have taken 25 centimeter cube of cola sample in this 150 centimeter cube beaker. I have taken 25 centimeter cube of distilled water. I have put the magnetic stirrer. Here I will show you students always get confused. You have to put the switch on, that is power on. You have to put the mains on, you can see. And for keeping the stirrer on, keep the stirrer on, stirrer is moving. You have studied in NMR nuclear magnetic resonance, how beautifully the magnetic stirrer is moving. Magnetic stir is magnetic, the platform is magnetic, what a beautiful circle it's making, getting the solution mixed. Now, we have to standardize our pH meter. <coughs> you know, this is a combined electrode. What electrode? Combined electrode, calomel electrode and glass electrode. It is called as what? pH electrode. Remember, this pH electrode has always to be put in 4 molar KCl solution or saturated KCl. This KCl provides chloride ion. If you keep this electrode in distilled water, the ion will be leached out from the membrane and it will become useless. From the membrane, glass membrane you can see very carefully. Therefore, it has always to be put in 4 molar KCl or it has to be put in saturated KCl. In this case, what students they do, like platinum electrode, like calomel electrode, or you can say conductivity cell, they use and put here and there. Remember, it's like a fish. Without water, fish cannot survive. So, this electrode without 4 molar KCl cannot work and cannot survive. So, always you have to put in the solution. Now, here you have to standardize. Backside you can see. Here there is automatic standardization also. But manual standardization you can see there, yes. But we, we do that also. But we do better way like this. You can see the wire. First of all, we have standardized it with pH 7 by adjusting the asymmetric. Then we have standardized with pH 4 by adjusting the slope here. Then we are going to standardize with pH 9.2 by adjusting the slope. After standardization is over, we take out the electrode, we clean the electrode and after cleaning the electrode, we put in the solution whose, see it has to be cleaned like this. You can see this glass bulb has to be cleaned thoroughly. Now I will be putting in my solution carefully. From the side, you can see the magnetic stirrer is getting disturbed. I'll be putting it off. I'll be positioning the magnetic stirrer and then putting it on. Off, 
and then on. Yes, you can see I am putting it on. Can you see spirit is moving? Yes. I will put aside, I will put my electrode here. Yes. Correct. This is pH of the solution at zero ml addition of NaOH. Remember, this NaOH is 0 0.1 normal, approx. We have standardized this NaOH with succinic acid. By weighing 0 0.59 gram of succinic acid, <coughs> dissolving and diluting to 100 cm cube in the distilled water, taking out 10 cm cube of succinic acid in the conical flask, titrated with NaOH in the burette with phenolphthalein as an indicator. And by knowing the volume of NaOH, we will come to know by N1, V1, N2, V2 exact normality of NaOH, which we will be using in calculations in future. Now, I am going to add in this 0.5 ml. See carefully, 0.5 ml, 0.5 ml, yes, you can see the pH value. Yes, I am adding another 0 0.5 ml. You can see pH is increasing. And if something goes wrong with the stirrer, put it off, bring in the center and put it on. Solution has to be stirred. Now I will be adding 0 0.5, you will see pH is increasing. You can see down, pH increasing. You can see pH value is increasing. I am going on adding 0 0.5, 0 0.5 ml at a time. I am adding up to 25 centimeter cube. 25 centimeter cube. See, this off, this on. Again, this will keep on moving. Student always face this problem. So therefore, you have to be very careful with the magnetic stirrer on. Yes. Beautifully it is moving now. Yes. See the pH has increased to this. pH is increasing. pH is increasing. pH is increasing. pH is increasing. You will see, I am going to take pH value as 12 cm cube. You can see at the 12 cm cube, the value is 8.5, 8. Wait, yes. You have to take the constant reading. Yes. Now it has become slow. It means it is going to get stabilized. Yes. Can you see? Slowly it is getting steady. Yes. Good. Now adding further, pH will be increasing. You can see here. You can see here very well, your stirrer should be moving. You can see very nicely it is moving here, rotating. Yes, 
so i'll be adding for the you can see you can see the reading at 20 cm cube see the bear at 20 cm cube i have added an mh and see the reading here Yes, you have to take up to twenty-five centimeter cube. I'll take here at twenty-three now. You can see the reading at twenty-three. Reading at twenty-three. See, so you have to take the constant reading. Yes, beautiful. Now I am making it twenty-five, twenty-six rather. I am making. You have to take up to twenty five. Yes. See the reading. Remember, you have to adjust. pH depends on temperature. You have to put this knob at room temperature. Today, room temperature is thirty degrees Celsius. So I have put at thirty. So I have to check with the thermometer the temperature and keep it at that so that the correct pH value will be coming. Now I am going to show you how my student has done this experiment in the laboratory this year and how the student has determined amount of phosphoric acid in cola sand. You can see over here beautifully written by my student all the readings over here. Beautifully written the journal. She is going for analytical chemistry, MSc. God willing, see the readings over here. See this. See the readings and calculations. The amount of phosphoric acid in cola. Can you see these graphs? You know it is as three PO four three protons are there. Three peaks will be there. Can you see one two one two three? But two peaks are sufficient. It will suffice for calculation and finding out the amount of phosphoric acid in cola sample. We take the mean of V one and V two. The first two we find out the percentage error and we display. It. You can see very nicely the student has done. So by this way, one can do the experiment. And remember the buffer solution. Do you know what is the buffer solution? Buffer solution is a solution which resists a change in pH, small change in pH, on addition of small amount of acid and base. There are two types of buffer solutions: acidic buffer and basic buffer. Acidic buffer is a mixture of weak acid and a salt of weak acid and strong base. That is acetic acid and sodium acetate. Basic buffer is a mixture of weak base and the salt of weak base and strong acid. That is ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. Here we get buffer solution, buffer tablets ready made. We dissolve in hundred centimeter cube of water, and by that way we use it. We know the pH range is from zero to fourteen. Below seven it is acidic, seven it is neutral, and above that up to fourteen it is basic in nature. pH is negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. So be very careful and get the benefit. I request my teacher community. To circulate it to students so that before doing the practical, they get an excellent knowledge and they don't get any difficulty. Thank you very much. Buffer tablets are available over here. This is pH seven. Yes, here. Can you see the tablets? Just take one tablet, dissolve in 100 centimeter cube of distilled water, 
and that becomes pH 7. Just like here, pH 7. And then we have buffer tablet of pH 4. Same way we prepare uh, pH 4. By dissolving one tablet in 100 centimeter cube of distilled water. This is buffer tablet 9.2. We dissolve in 100 centimeter cube of distilled water and make it like this and we standardize our electrode before its use. So I am sure that students will be benefited with this. And I request my teacher community to circulate among the students before they start the real practical in the laboratory so that students will be well acquainted and they will not be facing any problem, God willing. Thank you very much. God bless you all.